but the primary thing we're going to go after is smallmouth bass. This Sylvania recreation area is a wilderness area, 21,000 acres with 4,000 acres of lakes, just beautiful, pristine, clear lakes, gin clear, loaded with fish. It's a catch and release fishery, so we have to throw all these smallmouth bass back, but I tell you, it's a fishing trip that you won't forget. I'll be right back to show you and tell you how you can go camping in Sylvania after this message from Meyer. Well, we all set? Yeah, Ready to go. go. What about yeah. the weather? Not too good today, and hopefully it'll clear up tomorrow. Okay. Well, you got your rain gear on top? I put it on top of my pack. And we're ready to go, and let's hope we don't have to use it. Well, let's move. Let's okay. Go. You're going to be in front or back? I can take you back. Okay. I occupy the canoe with Terry McBurney, who's the head sporting goods buyer at Meyer Thrifty Acres. He's the one who arranged this trip up to Sylvania Track. We're also with his brother, Laurie, and his brother's son, Scott. Luke Dallas, who's a supplier for a sporting goods wholesaler, and Bob Bishop came along as cameraman. We're taking off right now in the Sylvania Wilderness Area up on the Minnesota, or Wisconsin, Michigan border. We're taking off for about a four-day trip back in the bush. Launch it out. Can you climb in there? Too much weight in the front, eh? Okay, down. Right. Rather unceremonious exit there at the launching site, but we're off. Three canoes loaded with the gear, all the food we need. Everything we need for about four days back in the bush. We're going to be fishing for largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, perch. Quite a few fish back in here. This is crystal clear water, a beautiful wilderness area. Now, as a wilderness area, there are some things that are a bit different than, oh, you'd experience if you were camping in a state park or a state recreation area. And one thing you notice for sure is the lack of sign of man. You don't see signs around. You don't see garbage cans. Uh, the campsites are hidden, and it's just a beautiful wilderness area. You have to take a number of portages. In other words, from lake to lake, you have to load the canoe on your back and load all your, all your gear and carry it from lake to lake. But in a beautiful s scenery like this, oh, I tell you, it makes a nice portage, that's for sure. Now, when I said the campsites are hidden, look at this. Our campsite, the only way you can tell where we're scheduled to be camping is by the post that's up there where it has a little insignia on it, indicates there's a campsite back there. Every, every camper who goes back into Sylvania has to register at the office before leaving. Essentially, your campsites are reserved. Now, you'd think that, that it might be difficult to get reservations. You cannot get reservations over the phone or through the mail. You have to go there, show up first, and that's quite a long drive up to the Upper Peninsula. But once you show up, if there are campsites open, which there usually are, you can occupy one. There are five people allowed per campsite, and there's some fairly strict regulations in involved. Now, this is a wilderness area. The idea is to allow people to get up into Michigan's Upper Peninsula into a pristine wilderness situation a lot of this timber is virgin timber. It's never been logged. The wildlife is protected. The fish, at least the bass, are protected in that you have to catch them on artificial lures and throw them back. You can't keep them to eat. You can perch, walleye, northern pike, but not the bass. So here's our, we actually occupied two campsites uh, with the number of people we had, but we cooked at one. Now, at a campsite, there's a tent pad, a place flat level where you can put your tent. You're not allowed to dig any tent trenches or ditches. All this is provided. There's a fire pit in each campsite. This is the only place you're allowed to keep a fire. And of course, one of the first things we do when we get there the first day is get that fire going, get some baked potatoes on the coals.
Now, as you saw from shore, the only thing that indicates that there's a campsite here is the post that is down along the lake. As you're traveling from lake to lake in the area, you really don't know that there are campsites back up in the trees, but they're set off a ways. They're not right along the water. You can see the water through the trees from the campsites, but they're set off quite a distance. Now, the only firewood that you can gather is wood that's down, and there's a lot of it because this area hasn't been logged. A lot of branches get blown down onto the ground. You can pick those up, lots of it around, take those back to the campsite to burn. There is an outdoor restroom at each campsite, and it also has uh, an organic uh, pit which takes care of the wastes. In other words, they don't come and move the outdoor john every year. Uh, they have organic process there that takes care of, of recycling the wastes. Now, I come back with firewood for the camp. We saw it up, cut it up. You don't want to carry too much stuff back in the bush because you have to carry it back out again, and a lot of it's heavy over the portages. So, you use logs and things to set around the fire. We did bring a camp stove with us, a small camp stove. Reason being is that you're not allowed to build fires just anywhere in the wilderness area. And we knew we were going to be taking at least one day back to some other lakes to do some fishing and we might want to heat up some hot chocolate or some soup or some sloppy joes. So we took a little portable camp stove with us for heating that up. The first night we eat our perishable foods, of course the steaks. What a treat! Over the coals, some coffee heating up. We just eat like kings, at least the first night. Now the trash, if you can burn the trash, you're allowed to burn it in your fire pit. Otherwise, you're provided with plastic garbage bags. You have to carry everything out that you bring in, that you don't dispose of. You're not allowed to bury any cans or anything. So the campsites, when you leave, look just as good as when you came. using the branches on the trees to hang towels, jackets on. Using a lot of ingenuity is what's required for camping like this. Be sure you bring your camera when you're at Sylvania. You can't tell what you might document, not only the fish, but some meals like this. Boy, it's good to look back at pictures of these and think back. And as I said, wildlife. There's quite a bit of wildlife in the area you might be able to get some pictures of. Now here's our refrigerator. We kept our ice cold pop right down in the water, built a ring of stones so it kept cool in the lake. So before the meal, Scott runs down and grabs a few cans of pop. Also water we obtained from the lake itself. The water is so clear out there, it's unbelievable. Sometimes you can see 30 feet down. It is so clear, so we just drank that water, hauled it up to the campsite in a container and had it with our meals. I tell you, this meal was great. Charcoal broiled steak, baked potatoes, mm-mm. Now there are a few pests in a wilderness area like this. One of them in Sylvania that you might encounter would be a black bear. So we take all of our food after every meal, put it in a backpack and hoist it up into a tree hanging from the limbs. At least the bears can't swat it down from there. Of course, another pest that you're gonna find all summer long, especially in wet areas like this up in the north woods is mosquitoes. So you're gonna wanna take some insect repellent because when you go out in the evening canoeing or fishing, if the wind isn't uh, moving over the water, you're likely to have a few insects. Oh, okay, I got one going here. Oh, I don't think it's very big. Oh, look at that, look at that. Look at this little stinker. Son of a gun. <laughs> Smallmouth bass. No doubt about this one. He's got to go back. All the bass have to go back, but it doesn't break me up to toss him back. He'll grow up. There we go. Well, you got to start someplace, you know. Can't start with a master angler fish. What the heck? We'll go. There's got to be some bigger ones in here. Got to be some big ones in here. Just get that jig after him. The jig is really a killer bait for crappie. I didn't know it was such a good bait for smallmouth, though, but they say it'll uh, 
I say it'll really do a number on them here. At least it has been lately. Just jerk the rod tip. Pause a couple seconds, jerk the rod tip. Now, cast again. Some really good looking territory here. Boy, I bet there's some good bass in this area. Oh, it is a beautiful area for smallmouth bass, for wildlife. Here's some mergansers in the spring, early summer. You'll find mama merganser with maybe her babies on her back as she strokes out across the water. A beautiful area, beautiful wilderness area, a great place to camp and also to fish. And we're going to be back. Fishing for smallmouth bass in the Sylvania Recreation Area is a real treat. When I was up there with Terry McBurney, Bob Bishop doing camera work, we caught quite a number of bass, good-sized ones, and we survived a rainstorm one afternoon, which really didn't bother us because the fishing was so great. Now, remember, in the Sylvania tract, you have to use artificial lures when catching bass, and you have to throw the bass back. It's a catch-and-release fishery. I'm going to show you where we did most of our fishing. We were camped here at Loon Lake at this campsite. We did some fishing in this area. Also, we portaged over to Deer Island Lake. The experiences in a day and a half of fishing we've put together on film for you, and join me now as we fish in the Sylvania area for smallmouth bass. Boy, this is a nice looking little bay here. This is some of these snags and stumps in here. Look terrific. Set that paddle down quietly. What I'm going to be using here, using a little jig. This Luke said that that should uh, do a number on him. So I'm going to give this a try. The way you work a little jig like this is you cast it up in there and uh, let it settle on the bottom. Give, oh, oh, I got one on. I got one on. Oh, boy. Hey, what luck. Looks like a nice one. Got to tighten this drag down a little bit. That's, uh oh. There he comes. He didn't want to come in too much. There we go. It's not a little bad one at all. Holy cow. Let me get, come here, you little monkey. Come here. Oh, he's looked like he's hooked pretty well in the lip. There we go. There we go. Sort of paralyzes them when you pick them up like that by the lip. Get this hook out. Ah, doggone it, unfortunately. That's a nice little bass. Unfortunately, here in Sylvania Tract, I have to throw them back. Ooh, I personally haven't caught enough fish in my lifetime where I enjoy throwing them back yet. But yeah, that's about 15 and a half inches right there. Not bad at all. Well, here he goes. Good luck, fella. And that's the way it's done. Let's see if we can catch a bigger one. I used that little pinky jig to catch all of my smallmouth bass on the day and a half I was fishing for smallmouth. Luke Dallas here took most of his smallmouth on a deep running lure, one that uh, worked down under the water five, maybe eight, nine feet. There again, he has to toss his back just like I did, a real heartbreaker to throw bass back like that. Now Luke wipes his hands off and shows you the lure that he was using. Totally different than the jig I used. The jig that I used, I bounced across the bottom Luke's lure works more like a little minnow scurrying or maybe imitating a craw crayfish. And in the middle of the afternoon, well, around noontime as a matter of fact, we got a rainstorm. Well, there's not much we could do, but just wait it out. We did catch a few fish in the rain, but we also stopped and fixed lunch, had some sloppy joes, and boy, were they good. With all that rain, out there, blasted at us about noontime. 
through lunch. How, how did that affect your day? Didn't affect me too much. Uh, I still had a great time. Just a super day of fishing. What about the lunch? Luke, you were hungry, weren't you? Oh, yeah, I got hungry there for a while. We got in there about 2 o'clock, and uh, the soup, the hot soup, was really good after the rain started. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, you got to be prepared up here for, for bum weather, right? Didn't you get into some heavy weather the last time you were here? All four days it rained. And I walked out and uh, never thought I'd dry out. But the question is, was it worth it? I'll be back just as soon as possible. Why? What was so great about it? Well, the, the smallmouth bass are just unbelievable fighters. They just tug and jump and put up everything you'd want. Have you ever had bass fishing like this before any place? Not up here. I've had fishing almost as good in Canada t uh, at times. I caught uh, fish, I caught about 10 of them that range from 15 inches to 17 and a half. Two of them 17 and a half. Just spectacular. Knocked me out on that ultralight rod. I fished the whole time with that little pinky jig. I tried a few of the other uh, crankbaits and things, but zilch, it didn't work. And uh, the day before, I got a couple on a pinky jig, and it was spectacular. That ultralight was bent on one fish I had on for about five minutes. What was, what was your big battle story? Well, uh, the first thing is I switched off of the crankbaits and went with MEPS most of the day. And uh, we uh, uh, caught a small bass, or um, my good friend over here caught a small bass, and we looked over and saw a bass down there that had to go six pounds. It looked wow. as big as a grouper. Portaging can get pretty heavy. I saw you, Laurie, coming back on a portage, and you looked like you were pooped. I was. Uh, that portage coming back was a little bit slippery, but it was probably one of the easiest we've done up here. It was more level than the one we were on yesterday. Is, is anybody tired? Well, I think we all are. <laughs> it was a long, hard day, but well worth it. Portages were a little rough after, especially after oh the second or third day into the trip because when you go to a different lake you have to cross over those portages. But boy, the rewards were well worth it for us at Deer Island Lake catching smallmouth bass like this. A real treat. You don't very often catch fish that size. Now there are uh, master angler rewards, of course, for smallmouth bass in Michigan. You have to have a five pound smallmouth, but actually there are only about a handful that size entered each year. Smallmouth bass differs from a largemouth bass and it does have a smaller mouth. And here you notice on this one, the holes around the rim of the mouth, those are indicators of where this fish has been caught before on an artificial lure. Now, if natural baits were allowed, the fish would tend to swallow the bait, putting it down in its stomach, and most fish would probably be killed rather than being able to be released as with artificial lures. So this fish could go back, grow bigger, and be caught again. What about the fish that you caught that have been caught? Well, I did catch some fish today, a number of them that uh, had obviously been caught before. But uh, put back rule, if that ensures the fishing is going to stay as good as it was today, I'm all for it. What about you, Terry? What well, do you think about that throwback rule? Well, it's a fish for fun, and that's exactly what it is. I hope they never change it, and I hope it stays just as good as it is today. It's a super rule. How good was it today? The best I've ever had in Sylvania, and I've been up here for 10 years now. That's good. Well, you know the fishing's good when you can allow the cameraman some time to fish himself. And he can catch fish, too. There's Bob Bishop tossing out a crankbait, and he connects with a hefty little smallmouth. So 
Well, that's the fishing in Sylvania Track. I heartily recommend it. It's worth the trip up there. It's worth it even if you don't like to fish, if you just like to camp and take pictures. What a time you can have on a Michigan weekend in the Sylvania Track. Put it on your calendar for this summer.